Hey guys, so this video is going to be about um, hot yoga, the benefits of hot yoga, why we do yoga in the heat, why we put ourselves through, <laughs> through all of this. Because, um, there's so many benefits, but there's also so many opinions. So everyone, if you say it does this, they'll say no, it doesn't, or this, whatever. So I'm gonna put that disclaimer out there that everything that I'm about to say as to the benefits of doing hot yoga, it's my experience, it's other people's studio in the studio's experience, and it's studies that are found online. I will put any studies that I kind of quote, I will stick them in the comments uh, or in the description to this video so that you can go ahead and check them out yourself. I'm not asking you to take my word for it, not at all. Um, you can debate this till the cows come home. You can Google anything and find something to support your opinion. So I'm not trying to say this is the be all end all. However, um, there does seem to be some running themes that keep coming back and coming back as to why hot yoga is, is really good for you. And so that's what I'm going to touch on right now. And you make your own decision. Um, the first thing is kind of the go-to when people say hot yoga. They're like, why is hot yoga so good? And people say, it's so detoxifying. Um, I have found that both positives and negatives on that one, that some people say it's not detoxifying, that it's the liver and the kidneys that do the detoxification all the time. Um, that there's only trace amounts of toxins found in sweat. Valid. There's a lot of more evidence, a lot more overwhelming evidence, I'll post one of the studies in the description, um, that I think it depends on which toxins you're testing for. Because what they have found is that when you sweat, um, who was it, in the U.S. National Library of Medicine and in the National Institute of Health, and there is a study that's posted that basically proves that sweat can concentrate arsenic up to 10 times more than it does in the blood, which means that if you detox and you've got arsenic and it's going to come out your sweat more than it's going to come out through the liver and the kidneys filtering it out. Um, cadmium up to 25% more than blood and lead up to 300 times more than blood, meaning that if you've got lead inside of your body, those heavy metals are going to start coming out through your sweat. Um, like I said, there's always going to be someone who's going to negate that and that's, that's fine. Um, but this is one of the things that is kind of a common recurring theme that, um, people believe is that when you sweat, you can detoxify yourself. You can get these heavy metals. Um, I think there was also a study done that, um, it was BPA that could be found in the sweat as you were coming out. So who knows? Like I said, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. But the detoxification is kind of the, the go-to benefit for hot yoga that everyone always talks about. So educate yourself on that one um, a little bit more, and I will move on. Um, so the second one is, this is a personal, a personal thing that I feel all of the time. Um, the, one of the, ben the second benefit for working out in heat is that you open your body quicker and deeper meaning your twists are deeper, your lunges are. Um, there's kind of a school of thought that, well, can you hurt yourself because the heat, you're opening a little bit deeper. I haven't really found that to be the issue. Everything that I've been reading, everything that I've been experiencing is that because your body is soft, it's more pliable. It's kind of like a rubber band that, of course, you can always pull it to, you can always you know, pull it and break it, but it has a lot more room to explore, whereas something hard, like a cold muscle, it can pull a lot easier. So if you came and tried to do our practice, so many people are like, well, you do a class without the heat. Well, our classes are too intense to do them without heat, to be honest, because if you try to move as fast as we move and kind of go through these postures and this intensity without having your body warm, there's a really good chance you could pull something. So by putting in the heat, we eliminate the warm up time and the cool down time and all that. We go right into our body starting to open up. Um, when the muscles start to get all that blood flow going into them, then also what happens is they start to relax. And so even though we've got loud music and it's pumping and we feel like we're, we're like, in reality, when you walk out that room, you feel more relaxed because muscles that you didn't even know you were clenching, all of a sudden you're, you're starting to relax. And it's not because you're consciously doing it. It's because the heat has penetrated into the muscle and gotten that blood flow a little bit deeper into the muscle than it would normally. So first reason to do benefit of hot yoga is detoxification. The second reason is because you get a deeper practice. You can open up a little bit more. You can relax a little bit deeper into everything. Um, and it just, it really makes a difference. Once you, most, the most common thing I've heard is people coming in here and once they get used to the heat, they're like, I, you ruined me. I can't do yoga without the heat now because I'm so used to feeling that, that openness and I can't find it in a cold room anymore. So that's the second benefit. 
The third benefit is the benefits of heat acclimation. So we kind of touch on this on a couple other videos and um, nobody can come into heat and rock it out immediately. You just can't, it's just not, you're not used to working out in heat. Um, I have a friend who's actually off um, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro right now and she didn't just jump into it and decide she's gonna do it. She actually spent weeks sleeping in high altitude gyms, um, acclimating her body so that when she goes on this trip, she can actually, you know, she, her body is already acclimated to altitude. Well, heat is the same way. You come in here once, you feel dizzy, you feel lightheaded, whatever. You come in here a second time and it starts to get better. It takes about two weeks of coming in here on a regular basis for you to get heat acclimated. So why do you care about getting heat acclimated, I guess is the real question. The true benefit of heat acclimation, I don't know, acclimation, there we go, heat acclimation. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, the true benefits of heat acclimation are that it your body performs better even outside of the heat. So it's almost like it, we're creating you, like you're becoming like this most efficient version of yourself. When you acclimate to heat, um, you can get down to your resting heart rate quicker, meaning that you have more control, your heart doesn't you know, beat out of control um, without you being able to do it. You can actually bring yourself back down out of that fight or flight a lot easier. Um, another thing would be, oh, they did a study, and I'll, try, I'll post this in the description, with cyclists, actually there's been many studies done with cyclists, and when they train in heat, they actually get better times in races outside of the heat. So the heat doesn't just help you in the heat. The heat actually, um, one of the theories, and again, I'm not a doctor, I have no idea if this is true, one of the theories that I've heard that makes a lot of sense because it goes along with what everyone feels is that um, as you're heating up, your muscles and, or your um, arteries and veins are expanding a little bit because everything expands in heat, right? So your heart has to work harder. It's a better cardiovascular workout before you're acclimated to the heat. So you're, that's why when you come in here, you start to feel dizzy or you start to feel um, your heart pounding like crazy because your body is working harder to pump the same amount of oxygen and the same amount of blood flow into the organs and into the skin and into the muscles. So what happens with heat acclimation is that everything's still expanded inside of you, but your organs and your muscles have, they kind of, the acclimation period means that they need less oxygen and less blood flow and they give off less waste. So suddenly your body has, goes from your heart working overtime to your heart having a really low resting heart rate because you don't need as much stuff. Your body is working more efficiently. And again, that's one theory that I've read and I have felt myself. And so I have found that the more that I'm in the heat, when I'm out there, I'm not a runner, but yet I'll try to jog sometimes. And the moment my heart starts to beat faster, I can slow it back down. It's really, really easy for me to now control my body because I, I'm, acclimated like I'm more efficient than <laughs> which is who I used to be um last and also the heat acclimation it makes you sweat quicker which it sounds like a negative in terms of I don't want to sweat when I'm walking the dog which that's one of my own personal pet peeves is I sweat now during a lot of activities and I, I never used to be a sweater I don't think I sweat at all until I was 25 um, once I started doing this hot yoga, I started sweating more and I'm like, I don't understand why I'm sweating so much. Well, what I'm realizing is that this sweat response, the quick sweat response is actually the most efficient version of yourself. Because if you think about it, what is sweat supposed to do? Sweat is supposed to cool off your body, right? So when something comes in, when some sort of environment is, is not ideal, the sweat is helping you to regulate your body temperature before things wreak havoc. So when you sweat faster, it's your body reacting quicker. Again, that more efficiency, it's reacting quicker to whatever the external stimuli is to regulate you so you stay consistent. The whole point here is, is that heat acclimation keeps your body running consistent. So you're not like this. The heart rate, the sweat response, the temperature, all of that, you are a more efficient being when you come into the heat. Um, and so this more efficient cooling system is another benefit to that heat acclimate, acclimation. So again, um, the fourth one, let's get into that really quick because it's a quick one, is kind of what we do here at Vent. Um, the fourth benefit to the heat is it adds one more layer to trigger you. It's a mental challenge. It's mentally hard, especially if you're brand new, to come in to work out hard, to push yourself when you're in this heat, to have sweat just dripping down, to be able to squeeze out your clothing when you're not used to that, to pull in like all around your mat um, of this sweat. 
it's a mental challenge to keep working hard when it, it feels like you're kind of done. So we use the heat as one more challenge, just like a posture, just like the loud music, just like the dark lights. We use it as one more layer um, to try to to try to make you want to quit, I guess, because that's what we do at Vent. We, we layer upon layer upon layer, and you decide where are you at and when is too much for you. And then, you know, we allow people to walk out of the room and come down to their mat. It's all about your practice, but we're here to pile those layers upon you so that you can figure out, how do I breathe through? How do, we, how do I become okay with sweat pouring down my face and getting in my eyes when I'm trying to do a flow? How do I become okay with softening and relaxing when I'm holding a posture for ungodly amounts of time and I've just got stuff pouring off of me and I'm not wiping it and I'm not shifting around. So that's another one is the mental challenge. So I promised you four because I know that I'm a lot, I, I talk a lot. So what are the benefits of hot yoga? Detoxification. Opening the body quicker, sorry. Opening the body quicker and getting deeper. Heat acclimating the body, which means that you are gonna become more efficient both inside and outside of the yoga studio. And putting yourself through that mental challenge, coming out stronger mentally. Um, since this is a heat video, I just wanna add a couple things. Before you are heat acclimated, like I said, it takes about, I don't know, they say about two weeks or so of working out in heat regularly. However, every body is different and it depends how much you work out. And if you can be heat acclimated and then as soon as you go away for six months and come back, you have to go through this again. Um, this is not something that stays with you forever. It's the same as if you were to be lifting weights and you get your body used to lifting a certain amount of weight and then you go away from, for six months, you come back, you're not gonna be able to lift that amount of weights. So until you're acclimated, you might feel dizzy when you come into our studio. You might feel lightheaded. You might, um, might even feel nauseous. Maybe, maybe you just ate some food or something and it's swishing around in there and the heat is just making it feel, you know, in summertime you feel like eating less and we eat like colder fruits and vegetables and salads and stuff. Maybe, you know, nauseous is a normal thing to feel when you come into the heat. Um, you are always, always, always allowed to lay on your mat for as long as you want to, to walk out of the room, to walk outside and come back in. We will never, ever, ever, ever pretend like we know what you're going through. Meaning if you need to do something in the studio, it's up to you. You've got permission 100% to back off of the heat. Um, join back in when you're ready. And maybe that's the next class or maybe that's five breaths after you come down. Um, so pretty much until you're heat acclimated, I recommend not pushing yourself too hard. Come in, sometimes maybe come in and just lie in the heat and stretch and just start to get your body used to it. Start to do a couple push-ups and sit-ups. Um, join in when you're ready, but uh, take it easy. 